Well, hello everyone and welcome to a real life, sometimes chaotic life, um, garden life video today. So it is Sunday, or when you're seeing this, it will be Sunday. It is actually Tuesday here because on Sunday I will be in Indianapolis. And I hope if you too are in Indy that you will come and see me at the Flower and Patio Show at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. I'll be there on Friday and Saturday um, at different times. And I know there's lots of advertising, so pick one. I would love to see you and please come up and say hello. So why is it chaotic? Because I've got so much going on before I am trying to leave town, in addition to really just trying to enjoy the garden. So what we are, go what we are going to do today is enjoy the garden a little bit at the golden hour. It is going on 6 p.m beautiful, beautiful time of the evening to be outside. I'm also going to be showing you a little bit of stuff that's going on in the backyard. Some of it I'm doing, some of it other people are doing, and there's just a lot of stuff in general going on. We had some visitors today. I'll tell you about that. Um, so what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Let's do it. We go you all grab your beverage of choice whether it's a glass of wine a cup of coffee a cup of tea iced tea um, whatever it is grab it and let's take a stroll in the garden during the golden hour now I love this time of day for many many reasons partly because the work day is ended also because I never know what to expect from my neighborhood just moments ago I heard a bunch of bagpipes did you hear them yeah. there's there was like a bagpipe bagpipe concerto going on now that I hear church bells over here, it's one of one of the benefits of living in kind of an urban context. But I thought what we might do today is walk a little bit through the garden because this is such a wonderful time of day if you want to capture lots of pictures of your tulips, of your daffodils, of whatever is blooming in your garden. Because if you shoot from east to west, it is backlit just beautifully. So let's give everyone kind of some examples of that. Sorry, we've got a big truck going by. But look how translucent the flower heads of the tulips look. And not only that, the green of everything else. Look at the blueberry bushes. Just how luminescent it looks. Really, really beautiful. So most of you already know this. It's kind of you're, you're thinking, oh, duh, Linda, we know this. But when I was new to photography and I was new to really gardening and I wanted to capture it at its best, I didn't know that there were certain times of day where it really was its most beautiful. And certainly the golden hour is one of those. So let's give an example of that, Stuart. Let's show them what it looks like when, when it is not backlit. So we are shooting now from west to east the sun is in the western sky and the tulips while they look pretty and they look colorful they look a little bit um, just a little bit blah particularly those in the distance they look a little bit washed out those over there on the hill underneath the maple tree they look a little bit washed out they look a little bit pale they look a little bit dusty and musty and that's because they are not backlit and illuminated by the sun. So let's come down, Stuart, if we can navigate the steps. And we'll get this kind of same shot of these same tulips, but from a different vantage point. So as Stuart kind of shows you what it looks like as we round the property, we round from west to east, see how the tulips become more and more beautiful? And then when we ultimately round the corner, 
everything is backlit and it's really, really beautiful. And the, the tulips, the presentation of the tulips is just so much more stunning because we get all these wonderful shadows. And you can see the lining. Can you see the lining there? And the detail of the tulips far better than you can at other times of day. So if you are, if you are shooting your garden and you have gone to the trouble of planting masses of tulips, then I highly recommend when you are trying to record their beauty to sustain you during the winter months that you do it at this time of day. Now conversely, in the morning, it's just the opposite. In the morning, we want them backlit by the eastern sun. And so then we reverse our photography and we shoot from west to east. Is that, Stuart, you're the photographer. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. And it's not just the tulips. Look at how everything from the blooming redbud trees to the magnolia to the new growth on the boxwood, look how it literally shimmers when it's got that beautiful golden glow of the late afternoon sun and how you can really pick up on the details so much better. And what I love about this is if you photograph your garden and you do it at different times of the day, it makes you appreciate the fleeting nature of them so much more than if you plant them and you just see them as you pass by them to park in your driveway or to park in the garage and as you walk to the front door. Really studying them and how they express themselves in varying types of light at varying times of day I think is really, really important. So let's take a break here and we'll look at some other things. Okay, so we're getting down at eye level. We are literally on the ground right now and we are taking imagery and video of the entirety of the garden, but at this eye level. And you can see how beautiful things look, how you can really capture the beauty, even, even in the wind, and how the salvia, purple salvia blooms dance in the wind. And I think it's really beautiful. And then if you look over in this direction, and you go higher up, you can see how beautiful the lavender blossoms of the red buds are. Again, we are photographing all of this from east to west because everything is illuminated and backlit by the western sun. And I've primarily been talking about the tulips, but look at how beautiful the violas and the pansies look. Now I've often talked about my theory of garden relativity and how every one thing in the garden relates to every other thing. Well, that's not just true about the garden itself, but how we use our gardens. So for example, when people say, oh, I would love to come and visit your garden, I will tell them, then come early in the morning or come at the golden hour about this time of day because the show and the colors are so much more beautiful at this time of day than they are at high noon. I had a number of guests today, some students from Heritage Hall, a local school, and they were here. We were discussing several different um, different kind of disciplines from writing to gardening. And they were here and it was beautiful and I think they thought it was beautiful, but it was at the harshest part of sunlight during the day. It was from like 12 to 3. Well, if I had had my druthers, I would have instructed them, if possible, when you have garden visitors or you entertain, you want to entertain when the garden is going to really showcase itself to the extreme. And that is during these magical, magical hours. And you can see that now just by looking and how everything is backlit. So Stuart, from a photographer's standpoint, give us the definition of backlit. Well, what it is essentially is like on you right now, you're backlit by the sun. So you have, a, if everybody looks at your shoulders and your hair and your arms, you have a bright yellow or like okay. a silver lining. And what that silver lining does is it separates you from the background. 
so you have a clear definition of, of the separation between your subject and the background. And the background. And it does the same thing with the nuances of whatever, um, of, of whatever your you're photographing, whether it's a flower or it's me or anything else. And it also provides a certain kind of softness that is typically not there during the harshest part of the day. And the shadows are so much. Oh, golden hour, yeah. Golden yeah, hour the is... shadows are just so, so much lovelier. Longer. Yeah, longer. And the other thing is, it's just the, le the least harsh time of the day. Yeah in the summertime it's the coolest part of the day um, and just in general things look a little less stressed a lot of your perennials sometimes during the heat of the day they will really almost tell the tale they'll look exhausted they'll look dried out they'll look splayed they will look pale and if you wait to the golden hour they'll be more saturated they will have restored themselves to a greater amount of definition in their form and just overall there'll be more beauty. So for what it's worth, there's just a few photography tips as you try to capture the beauty of your spring garden and share them with others. But more importantly, as I said earlier, enjoy them during the winter months or during the dead of summer when it's just so hot or so cold and you need something to sustain you. Now, the other thing I think that's important as you are photographing your garden is to look at it not only from west to east but also north to south and i think it's really beautiful this time of the evening in looking towards the south and looking how all of the foliage and the blooms are illuminated they literally almost glow and i think that's really really beautiful and at different times of day it's even more spectacular so that's another hint look at your garden Garden from all sorts of different perspectives, from up high, from down low, from east to west, from north to south, from an angle, because that's how you capture, that's how you think like a magazine editor, and you really capture what's beautiful in, in um, the, the different, um, well, the different tableaus of your garden. Like right now, if I were doing a magazine shoot, if I were a magazine editor, let's show this scene again. And what would I do? Well, first of all, we would make sure that all cars, all pedestrians, everything were out of the scene. And even though you could edit those out with AI, <laughs> uh, better yet to just capture it in the moment. The other thing that I would do is obviously, I would move that shovel that I have right there, unless I was leaving it there to kind of tell a story, as if I'm getting ready to plant something there. The other thing that I would do is I would straighten anything that looked crooked to me, that looks crooked to me. Stuart and I have done that a thousand times, not always successfully. So you can see that my storage container right there, the brown woven storage container with the lid, that isn't sitting perfectly flush. I would probably try to straighten it and probably if I was photographing this for a magazine shoot or for my blog or for something, I wouldn't have an empty pot there. Um, and so that's just some of the things that you want to think about when you're photographing your own garden to capture it at its very best. Now let's turn around, go in the opposite direction, let's go north and I want to show you a few things in the backyard. So there are a few things that are starting to happen back here. I told Stuart yesterday, I'm not going to show anything to the back in the backyard until it's absolutely complete. But then I thought that there were some instructive things that um, that might be helpful to you and also are helpful to me as I think through 
think through, I guess, the design logic of what I'm doing. So very, very sadly, I lost, and, I, and this is part of the footage that you saw earlier, I lost the triple ball Carolina, uh, Carolina Cypress that I bought in, that was in Arkansas, I think, last year. And sadly, I lost it. It did fine until those zero degree temps. And then it was probably the perfect combination of, I probably, sh it should have been watered and it got down to zero degrees. And that's it was not in, what that is. And that's not this. what this <laughs> is. No, the, the footage you, you saw prior to this segment um, <laughs> is what we took out, what Victor helped me take out. And yes, I don't have my, my uh, brace on, but Victor had to do that stuff for me because I couldn't do it for myself this year. I replaced it with a triple tier juniper, and I'll talk about that a little later. This is eminently tough. This is the same family of things that I often, when I talk about shop your garden, remember all of those little junipers that I dug up from the other house and I planted. Um, so that is that. And then I wanted to do kind of a trio here in this corner of all gray plants. So we have potted those up um, in our blend, our mixture of potting soil where we used and we refreshed old potting soil with new potting soil and amended it a little bit with soil conditioner. And in that instance, I used about a third, 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 but it's a way that you can reuse old potting soil in new plantings. So I think that's really a cost efficient measure um, and it saves us some money. So this is kind of how that turned out. There's still a lot of stuff that needs to be done back here. Um, Victor helped me plant some other things, plant some pots on the steps, plant some better boxwood. A lot of this is not finished, but I promise you that it will be finished in, times for, in time for Easter because just like Thanksgiving, I am just praying that we will be able to have our Easter fete, our Easter brunch outside. And we've got a crowd coming. I think it'll be very, very fun. And I hope to serve that Easter brunch out here in the backyard and maybe even have a, a tiny little Easter egg hunt for littles. So that's kind of what's going on here. It's been kind of a manic day as I get ready to go out go out of town. I look like heck. Um, I've been running all sorts of errands, but as I always try to show you, this is just kind of real life and how we squeeze things in in the margin. So let's close this out with a really, really beautiful borrowed visual landscape. Oh, Stuart was looking at it earlier and look how beautiful that eastern redbud looks just beyond the lattice work and across the alley. I can't wait for mine in front to be mature enough to be that that beautiful. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. It was a lot of fun. If you're in Indy, like I say, head on over to the fairgrounds. I hope to see you um, if I haven't already seen you, <laughs> depending on when you watch this. I'm also really, really excited to be, to be able to see lots of my family members whom, as you know, live in uh, live in Indiana. Um, so I will be representing Carmel and Jasper and Fort Wayne and Indianapolis and Zionsville, all sorts of uh, places where I have family. So there you go. See you guys. Hope you enjoyed this garden life this Sunday. Linda's plants arriving. Like old friends. like 30 in there. <laughs>